Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Bob J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Welcome to the broadcast. This is Clyde J. Kale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 63 for Monday, September the 21st, 2020. I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hello, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. I'm so glad you two are here. We have such a lot of fun. And one day, we might just record our uh, before uh, we start recording conversation because I think we have more fun talking <laughs> about <laughs> things in general. Then again, our listeners may get bored. Anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> the theme for this week is the uh, continuing talking about art movements. I uh, last week I asked Diane for a subject and. You know, she said, well, maybe European, you know, so I searched on the uh, YouTube and I came across the Rococo art movement. And I love saying that word, Rococo, such a nice word. I don't know why I like it. Yeah. (laughs) But the Rococo art period was in the 18th century. And every time when I uh, personally, when I think of uh, the 18th century Europe and uh, the the uh, kings and the, the autocracy and you know the elegant with the with the white wigs and everything. It's because of the Rococo, because the Rococo artists, that's what they painted, and it was a French movement which uh, then spread out throughout throughout Europe, and it influenced uh, architecture, design, furniture, and porcelain, and the porcelain figurines. So uh, the two the videos that uh, we uh, picked describes a little bit about that. And uh, Diane, you uh, you got any thoughts on that? You want to start the conversation off? Well, it was a time when, um, but right before that, it was the Baroque period, which was very ornate and um, there was real bright colors and sort of extravagance and it moved into the Rococo period and it, things got more muted and more fantasy kind of. And um, they had a lot of like cupids and more outdoors scenes and all the flowing dresses and fabrics. And um, there was nudes in there. And it was just like a whole different um, outlook on life, I guess. And uh, so that's kind of what it was all about, I guess. Um, they, but, yeah, they had the uh, uh, more. The col- colors were more pastels, 
Yeah. Yeah, you know, more uh, pastel and and uh, like you said, flowing and it. it the figurines and the scenes displayed a, a frivolous, kind of like a frivolous life of uh, of the wealthy, the wealthy and the, and the aristocrats, and how they uh, spent their uh, you know their free time. They seem to have all free time, you know, because which is this, the reality of it was uh, the uh, the common man, the peasants were were being taxed heavily you know, to to provide that frivolous time period. Uh, Constance, you want you want to add your thoughts on it? Or? Yeah, I I like the uh the Baroque and Rococo area era because of, I really love the furniture from that time period. It's so ornate and a heavy, you know, chunky, really, you know, serious furniture, not, you know, like what we get today. All of it's just gilded with uh, with gold and stuff, and in the architecture in the houses and stuff. With the, and a lot of the paintings in those castles and stuff are just painted straight onto the wall, or, you know. So it's really a really cool time period. The craftsmen made really beautiful furniture and chandeliers, and it's just a really cool, you know. And it, uh, you know, like I said, it, it started in France. But then expand it, you know, it spread throughout Europe, you know, uh, as, especially among the you know, autocracy. You know, there was Italian Rococo painters, German Rococo painters, and 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 um, what uh, when I came across the video and what really sparked my interest was uh, besides the name was the porcelain porcelain figurines. And when I lived in uh, Naples, Italy. And Naples is famous for a particular style of porcelain called Capo di Monte. And it's very uh, delicate, ornate uh, uh, figurines and, and uh, uh, flowers and, and, and uh, just, just really, really beautiful, but really delicate and painted with uh, pastel colors and, and it's uh, with pastel glazes, you know, to where when the sunlight hits it just right, it's absolutely beautiful. Well, they uh, that became, came about because of influence from the Rococo period. And in fact, one of the videos I got lucky because I wanted to uh, describe, I was going to describe you to to the uh, the palace, the Capitol Monte Palace, the Royal Palace that's now a Capitol Monte Museum. But there was a that. The last video I recommended was a, a, a six-minute video of a tour through that palace. And unfortunately, in the video, they only showed like 30 seconds of the one room in which I was going to talk, which is from the floor to the ceiling. The walls is all uh, ornate por porcelain with uh, the Capital Monte uh, glaze, you know, styled. It, it's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's just... You know, and it's a large, this is a large room, you know, the ceiling, I don't know, 20 foot ceilings, I guess, you know, whatever, way up there. Yeah. And then up around the, 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 the top with the, the gold and, and gilded. And it's, it's just, it's a, uh, just absolutely uh, beautiful. And this was the uh, King's um, Royal Palace. It was his, considered his, uh, like his summer palace. Yeah. <laughs> And the reason why it was built, he built it, was he needed. He had been collecting a lot of artwork, and from around Europe, and he needed a place to put his art. So uh, that's why it's filled with. So why not build another palace? <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, I wish I could do that. <laughs> it was back back in like what seventeen thirty something or whatever, you know. So. Nowadays, you know, now it's a it, it, it's a museum now. You know, the Italian government, you know, made it into a museum, open to the public, you know, for a fee, and the grounds <laughs> well kept, you know, and it's just it's just a really nice, pleasant place you know, to visit. And I was telling Constant before we started, um, <laughs> the 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 the, the uh, palace is big, lots and lots of rooms to walk through and see, and 
they don't have any bent. At least the last time I was there, because I was there in the in the nineties, you know. And but uh, they don't have any benches for you to sit and rest, and you basically can't see at all because you get tired. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, maybe that's by design. Maybe they don't know you can't see, so you have to come back for several visits. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, you get wore out. Let me tell you, it's and there's no, there's not much air conditioning either when you're inside. It gets pretty, really? yeah, it gets pretty hot. And even though the rooms are nice, large and airy, but uh, you know, and that's I, why they had those tall ceilings was so that the heat would go way up to the top and it would stay cooler down below. Yep, yeah. But uh, I went there when I was first sent to Na- Naples in the military. I went there as a single, and then I've been there a couple times when i took my kids when they were little and that wasn't very pleasant because they got annoyed pretty quick you know <laughs> and three, three, five years old yeah they, they don't appreciate it you know? well, like <laughs> so, they like they like playing in the park though they enjoyed that you know playing on the grass <laughs> you know, running around but they don't really care you know so but the uh, Years ago, and I, since I've been there, I'm I was very glad that this video was made. I I think in 2010, so I'm glad that they've still been able to maintain it and keep it, yeah, you know, keep it open to the public because um, it's uh, you know a very a fine example of the uh, Rococo period and the, the elegance and the autocracy and uh, which uh, the the thing that I noticed in the video they talked about the historian talked about that the images portrayed in the paintings wasn't necessarily true. The artist took liberties, you know, that people now, you know, a hundred years, several hundred years later, we look at that and we go, oh, wow, all those people just, you know, they just kind of lived and, you know, free that they just kind of, you know, artists took you know, artistic license, you know, and uh, made them a little more frivolous than what they was, than what they really was in life, which led to, because in the, uh, it led, led to, the rev- to the French Revolution, because, you know, the autocracy and, and the wealthy was very overbearing, and they were treating, you know, the common people like crap, and they eventually, uh, thankfully, though, that the, members of the uh, uh, revolution had enough sense to value the art, to keep the art yeah, and didn't destroy the art. But it was, uh, it was the art that inspired them because that's how, you know, they didn't have cameras, you know, and could, could take photographs, you know, and movies back then to show, you know, how frivolous the autocracy and how, you know, uh, you know, the life. Well, they spent their days and stuff. Yeah. So, but through the paintings, the people got, got a chance to see it. And whenever they finally, you know, when they burst into the palaces and they saw these paintings, it just confirmed what they already, you know, <laughs> suspected. But it actually, maybe it's, it's a bit of propaganda because it, they weren't quite that, that bad. You know, at least that's what some historians think, you know. Diane, you want to you want to add any comments? Well, the the aristocracy at the time they pretty much didn't do anything, and they had all their workers or you know the people that were subservient to them doing all the chores and everything. So they really didn't have to do anything. I mean, their their lives were pretty frivolous, and it kind of um, got got to uh, to the point where they didn't have any meaning in their life and and so that all kind of fed into the um, revolution and that all happening especially when the working class people saw you know like you were just saying that how frivolous their lives were <laughs> and how on the other hand how hard their li- the workers lives were yeah. in comparison so it was, it was um, you know brought a lot of stuff to light that maybe they didn't realize Yep, and the the point that, that uh, I uh, I picked up was uh, artists played a major role, you know, because then later after the uh, what kind of the next art movement was referred to as what they called the neoclassics, you know, period, and at that about that same time was the uh, 
the excavations in Pompeii and Herculaneum were discovered. And they were digging up and seeing these structures of the Roman structures, you know, and everything. And, and they it developed a, uh, a desire to go back to the ancient forms of art, you know, which uh, kind of brought, ushered in the, the neoclassics period. And so it was more of a structured and, and uh, the um, uh, revolutionaries kind of adopted that too, you know, and, and uh, then uh, I think for our next discussion, maybe we'll talk about the Romanus, the Romanus period, you know, the Romantic uh, uh, period of art, which was was the French Revolution brought that about too, you know, and everything. So, uh, we'll, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting when we're talking about all these different um, types of art and how the artists really um, fed into what was going on and and brought that into the light like you know and and how they had influence over the people like seeing and realizing things and it's it's really and, and even just like the um you were saying with where they were finding stuff in rome and stuff how that all kind of plays into you know what kind of art was being made and it's it's just really interesting how that all ties together mm -hmm. okay and it, it brings it for me it explains how you know uh the how art is being made today the influences that you know uh, having it to me i to me people they they don't like history but art history is is very important to understand because you can then identify with uh, what influences your your work you know and uh, as as a practicing artist and uh, and especially when if you're given the opportunity to talk to creators and collectors and you know and they bring up some name of you know some artists from the 18th century or 19 or early 19th century you know what they're talking about yeah, <laughs> yeah a little bit or in most cases you can also uh, explain your own artwork with a little more authority you know and so so these uh I think it's, it's 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 interesting and it's important too, and it does serve a useful useful purpose to uh, to to be aware, not necessarily study in detail and be aware. Like I don't know about you, I'm not some historical expert. I'm a history hobbyist. Yeah, <laughs> like you notice, I haven't even attempted to to mention any of the uh, artists' name from the Rococo period because they're all <laughs> French. I cannot pronounce their name. I would. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> I will say the one painting I can't think of uh, pronounce the artist's name. Did it, but you two will probably remember in the in the video it showed that uh, woman on a swing. Her dress is all fluffy and everything. Oh yeah. Did you see that? What that dirty man was doing? Yeah, he was looking <laughs> up her dress. Yeah. <laughs> Not that he probably could see anything. She had blemmers on, but I mean, I guess for that time period, that was probably pretty risque. <laughs> her shoe was flying across, or her shoe flew off while she was swinging, and her skirt went up, and he was standing there looking. But what was what was funny when you look at it? Okay, and on one hand, you don't know is she's doesn't know he's doing it, but on the other hand, maybe she does. It's kind of the, the painting is <laughs> is very flirtatious, you know. It's very, and he's just he's got an expression on his face like, ooh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it's one of my favorite paintings from that period. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful painting. I love the way he she painted her her or uh, clothing. Oh yeah, very you know, in, in the swing. I mean, it just looks you know so realistic. But and a lot of those artists, you know, the, the, with, they went with the port <laughs> portraitures, you know. Was, uh, of the of the dukes and the kings and didn't they talk about one artist who had been who had painted what a thousand portraits he had painted so many portraits that i forget which what the artist's name was but yeah yeah that's a lot of portraits in your lifetime yeah but you know it comes around to that only if you had connections only if you were you know in the uh if you you know uh kind of uh uh, uh, 
circled and had and, and in the you know aristocratic you know circles and and that the you, you know if you were of a of a commoner because the class system was very heavy you know then you didn't have a chance <laughs> yeah reminds me it's kind of like for i've we've discussed this before talking with our it's kind of like that now have you noticed that kind of Unless you are a, a artist working in a certain economic circle with a certain, you know, uh, economic connections, you're not recognized. Have you noticed that? You know, it, uh, oh, you know over the years and uh, the few that really break through, though, are the ones that I, you know, the, the ones that I call, you know, the uh, independents, the the guys, the artists who say, you know, the Jackson Pollocks and whatnot who say, hey, I'm just going to do my thing. And if, <laughs> if I sell something, then fine, you know. And, and the, the, but uh, if you go down the game of, of uh, you know, uh, trying to uh, appeal to the aristocrats of our society, there are those people who think they're aristocrats. You know, and, and unless you are in that kind of a circle, you you don't you don't end up in the museums. You know, and that's a sad thing. And that's why I think it's time for a, maybe a major revolution. You know, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fact, well, I think a lot of stuff has happened just because of the internet, and I think that's kind of leveled the playing field a bit from what it used to be. I mean, you know, with the gallery system, you didn't have a chance unless you got were in a gallery. But now that's kind of opened up some. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's going to continue to open up since because of the COVID and stuff. A lot of the galleries are going online now and trying to to get seen that way, you know, Absolutely. to happen to backspace. But Diane, you just, that's a perfect segue because I was leading in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> We spend too much time talking together. <laughs> you didn't really share the time. <laughs> yeah, because now with the the, the, the internet was the re revolution. It was our ver our version of this of the 18th century revolution. The, you know, the it's uh, it's completely opened up the field, and it has given you know artists a, a chance. If you have a you know a internet connection and you ha or yeah, you have a phone and you take some good photographs of your art and you can get your art out there and, uh, and, uh, get recognized. And, um, that, uh, in fact, I would not have even imagined three years ago what I've accomplished so far, you know, that I would be exhibiting in Europe. <gasps> First of all, I couldn't, I, I couldn't <laughs> afford to ship my, you know, to ship the art over there. You know, if I even got, you know, got accepted, but then with the digital form, I've been able to, you know, I've had, you know, so far three different, three exhibits in Europe this last year and, uh, and, and, you know, digital form, you know, and as a result of that, I've received, oh my God, I think it's up to six or seven different email invitations from traditional standard galleries inviting me to participate in their exhibits in a, but unfortunately they don't have the digital form. They're just the traditional form. I've had to decline because I don't have the money to ship the artwork over there, but that never would have took place if it hadn't been for the internet. You know, so it, uh, you can do it folks, especially to you young artists out there, you know, keep plugging that, keep posting and everything. So let's, let's wrap this episode up. We'll end with that. I hope you enjoyed our conversation about the uh, Rococo period. I love saying that name. If I had a dog, I'd name it Rococo <laughs> so I could call it all the time. <laughs> it's just fun to say. <laughs> yeah, it's just fun word to say. All right. So, you, so you've been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kale, and this was episode 63. And I've been chatting with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And I'm going to say goodnight to Diane and Constance. And I'll let Diane say goodnight to everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, Constance. Good night, Clyde. Okay, Constance, your turn. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, Diane. Good night, Clyde.
Good night, folks, and thank you so much for listening. <clears throat>